President Biden plans to meet today with families of Americans taken hostage in Israel by Hamas. This ordeal is bringing new attention to other detained Americans around the world. We have the story of one man held by a Taliban in Afghanistan for the last 16 months and his family's plea for his release. In her first TV interview, his wife spoke with CBS News chief foreign affairs correspondent and Face the Nation moderator Margaret Brennan. Margaret, good morning. And good morning to you, Nate. Anna Corbett, whose husband Ryan is being detained by the Taliban, feared that going public would endanger his life. She is now breaking her silence because she says her husband's health is deteriorating. Now that the U.S. is regularly meeting with the Taliban, she wants President Biden to make bringing an American home his top priority. While we love and respect the people of your country, I desperately need my father home. 13-year-old Caleb Corbett read us the letter he wrote to the Taliban, personally pleading with them to free his father. Caleb's dad, 40-year-old American Ryan Corbett, has been detained in Afghanistan for 16 months. Ryan's wife, two daughters and son are desperate. What is life like for him? So he's held in a very small cell. He's allowed sunlight 15 to 20 minutes per month. There have been reports of him fainting, of seizures. He had to celebrate his 40th birthday in the cell alone. Corbett was arrested in August 2022, a year after the last U.S. troops withdrew. The State Department tells Americans don't go. Why did Ryan feel it was safe enough to go? He had a business visa. He had been living there since 2010. He did not want to abandon his employees and shut that down just for his own comfort. So it was really for the Afghans and for his staff that he returned. Corbett tried to restart his business consultancy for Afghans, which he'd abandoned in 2021, as the family fled amidst the chaos of the Taliban seizing power. We had five suitcases, five carry-ons. The kids had to say goodbye to their pets. After living in Afghanistan for how long? Almost 12 years. Fleeing the country where Caleb was born and raised and keeping quiet about Ryan's imprisonment until now has been traumatic. My neighbors were assuming that he had left us. When people asked me questions, I had to respond, he's on a business trip, <laughs> a never ending business trip. The children had to pretend with their friends that everything was normal. The Taliban has twice allowed Ryan Corbett brief calls home. We have had now 16 minutes in 16 months, which is insane. It's hard to really tell how he's doing because he's not alone on these calls. On the last call, when he started talking about his health, the call was cut off. What do you want your father to know? We'll try to get him back. and. We don't want him to miss anything else important. Caleb misses his jokes. I don't know if all of us do. <laughs> <laughs> They're dad jokes, yeah. typical dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> no, we totally miss his jokes. This photo, never before public, taken by a Qatari official, shows a visibly thinner Ryan in captivity. The U.S. has had no access to Ryan, but does meet with the Taliban about humanitarian aid and counterterrorism. Corbett's family argues bringing a U.S. citizen home should be the priority. I wonder what would happen if this were President Biden's family. What more could be done? It does not make sense to move on with any policies or any strengthening relationship with the Taliban until this is resolved. Now, yesterday in Doha, the top State Department envoy met with a Taliban official and raised the cases of at least three detained Americans, including Ryan Corbett. Last September, the Taliban conducted a prisoner swap with the U.S. Taliban officials contacted by CBS News insist that Corbett is being treated well, but they did not indicate what they are seeking for his release. Now, Corbett's family is buying him Christmas presents, Tony, and they're hoping they'll all be reunited soon. We are all hoping. Another tragic detail and a very difficult story. It's shocking to realize how many Americans are wrongfully detained overseas. Margaret, thank you very much for that report.